If you are like me, your terminal experience starts with running some npm commands and ends with messing up a git merge. But the terminal is not a scary place at all and, truth being told, you need to get used to it if you want people to take you seriously as a developer. The good news is, you don't have to become a Linux expert to get there. Knowing your way around Bash will usually get the job done and, surprisingly, this is a lot simpler than most people realize. So let's spend the next couple of minutes looking at what Bash is, what you can accomplish with it and what are some of the best practices you should keep in mind. Bash, or the Born Again Shell, was first introduced in 1989 by Brian Fox as part of the GNU project and quickly became the default shell on most Linux systems. If you are wondering why we also call it a shell, it's because it acts as a layer between you and the operating system. Think of it as the environment that wraps around the core of the system and lets you send commands, get responses or control the machine without directly poking at its internals. At its core, Bash is just a command interpreter. It takes the commands you type in your terminal and executes them on the operating system. But what makes it powerful is that anything that you type manually in the terminal can be automated using scripts. So, let's look at a basic example. Whenever you're working on a new feature that's ready for testing, you usually go through the same routine. You make sure the code is auto-formatted, update the Swagger API client if needed, run some tests locally, stage all your changes, and then commit everything with a message. But there's no reason to repeat these steps manually every single time, so we can bundle them into a small bash script that does everything in a single command. We'll start by creating a file called commit.sh and make sure to tell the system to use bash to interpret the following lines. Next, we'll make sure we can pass in the commit message as an argument and then define all the commands we mentioned earlier. We can also echo some logs for clarity and we can even use a conditional evaluation to only attempt a commit if there are indeed changes in the codebase. Finally, we need to make the script executable before being able to actually run it. And this is just the beginning. On top of conditionals, shell scripts can also include loops, functions, error handling and even interact with external tools or APIs. Let's look at another practical example of handling the build process for a monorepo. We'll start by defining the component folders we want to build in an array. Then, we loop over each component and call the build function. Inside the component, we'll run the npm build command. If the command fails, we'll log the error and also send out the error to a monitoring service via a simple API call. If the build is successful, we'll simply log it on the screen. This convenience is refreshing, but before you start turning your entire project into a mess of shell scripts, there are a few best practices to keep in mind. First, always set the E and U flags at the top of your script. This makes your script exit immediately on errors and warns you if you reference unset variables, both of which help you avoid silent failures that can be extremely annoying to debug later. Second, don't write scripts that are hard to read because Bash doesn't have to be cryptic. Use indentation, comments and give your variables clear names. Third, be careful with paths and environments. Scripts that work on your machine might break on someone else's if you rely on hard-coded paths or don't check if required tools are installed. Try to use relative paths and consider adding checks at the beginning of your script to verify that key dependencies are available before moving on. And, most importantly, avoid over-engineering. Bash is great for glue logic, for chaining together tools and for small workflows. But, once your script starts branching into multiple files or you're re-implementing features that already exist in more capable languages, it might be time to switch to Python, Go or something more structured. If you liked this video, you should check out some of the other content on my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and, until next time, thank you for watching.